Shiny hunting in Pokemon Scarlet and Violet is absolutely insane. Need proof? Well, this is a shiny Charcadet, and he was found only two minutes after starting the timer for this video. With how quickly you can get shinies in this game, the results after hunting for an entire day will seem unreal. So sit back and let me take you through my 24 hour shiny hunting journey. As I said before, my first shiny for this challenge was an amazing shiny Charcadet. He's in my top three favorite new Pokemon for this region and I love him. The shiny barely changes, but honestly, the vibrant blue eyes just works perfect for him. What an amazing start. How I'd decide my next hunts was based on what outbreaks I could find. My next pick was Swablu, because his shiny is just universally loved by everyone. The shiny bird, however, wasn't found in two minutes like my Charcadet, and I actually crossed the one hour mark with no luck. But eventually, the golden little cloud bird popped into existence and we scored ourselves a second shiny. Shiny. Look at him! This is an S tier shiny and you can't change my mind. I didn't mention this at the start, but I also had some challenges for myself to complete in these 24 hours. And those included getting a whole box of shinies, getting at least one shiny of every type, and to get at least one shiny from every generation. For every challenge I don't complete by the end, I have to surprise trade away a shiny to someone random. We'll be checking up on these stats every now and then. The next hunt was a really cool one. For some reason, Noivern outbreaks are super common, so of course I had to hunt this giant dragon bat. For those who aren't aware, shiny hunting through outbreaks requires you to kill 60 of the Pokemon in that outbreak to give you the best odds for a shiny. And that task was much more annoying than usual here because the Noivern would fly away as they spawn and I couldn't reach them. However, I eventually killed 60 of them and got the shiny not even 20 minutes after the Swablu. Oh my god, he's flying away. Please come down. I need you. Oh my god, no, go away. I don't want you. I eventually caught him and I decided to go to a Glimit outbreak. This one is usually in caves and because of how narrow some of the paths are and how small the Glimits are, the outbreaks are really good because they all spawn in a big clutter instead of spread out everywhere. It turns out I forgot to KO 60 of them before hunting for like a solid 30 minutes and then another 20 minutes passed and then this happened. <gasps> Hello shiny gibble. No, go away. I don't want you. I want the other one. Where are you going? Not what I was looking for, but a shiny I'll definitely take. Stuff like this is going to happen a lot throughout the video. The shiny glimmer was then kind enough to rear its head only 10 minutes after the gibble as well. We had now scored five shinies in only two and a half hours, which averages to one every half an hour, which is just insane. Here's a look at our progress for the challenges I set. It may not look like much has been done, but we've only just started. I was actually pretty concerned for what I decided to hunt next, and that would be a side Lazar. What's scary about their outbreaks is one, they're super fast and constantly bump into you which gets so annoying, and two, they're so fast and run so far away that they actually despawn themselves pretty quickly after spawning. So if a shiny popped up and I wasn't completely focused, I could totally fail it. Finding the right path to spawn and despawn the non-shinies was quite a pain but I eventually found a good rhythm. Then after an hour of hunting, it was time to see if I was prepared. Oh my god, that's the shiny! Oh, save, save, save before it despawns. Please, please, don't. No. Okay, we got the save. We got the save. Okay, thank you. Oh my god, that was scary. Oh my god, that's such a cool shiny. I was so happy I didn't fail the shiny. And you're probably not going to believe this, but as soon as I caught him, I went into the pause menu, checked if the footage you just saw was saved properly, and went back to the game to see that I was swarmed by a bunch of Paldean Tauros. I thought nothing of it because these guys spawn everywhere. However, I have no clue how, but without even looking for it, I somehow identified that this Tauros wasn't like the others. No, there's no way that's a shiny. It's just the game's buggy lighting, right? Oh my god, it was the shiny. Let's go. That is so hard to spot. Yep, that's right. The hardest to identify shiny in this game literally just handed itself to me. I was so happy because this is a shiny I would never want to manually hunt because it just sounds like torture. But here he was right in front of me just minutes after the cyclers are as well. And get this, our next shiny was found only 10 minutes later. Like I said, shiny hunting in this game is just cracked. The next one was the ice blockhead penguin who decided to add a little bit of strawberry flavoring to himself. Another absolute banger shiny to add to the collection. Next, I traveled to a Flittle outbreak, and I was pretty nervous about hunting this one too, because Flittle is tiny. Luckily, I found a good spot to do the picnic method and have a good amount of spawns surrounding me. Oh yeah, I forgot to mention, but there's two ways to despawn and respawn Pokemon when shiny hunting, and that's to either go far away so the Pokemon are out of your proximity and then come back, or find a spot where you can open and close a picnic. The only downside is you need to find a sweet spot where you can optimize how many will spawn after you close the picnic, which can sometimes take like 20 minutes on its own. But like 
like I said, I found a great spot with a good spawn distribution, and luckily it's pretty easy to identify the shiny, despite its size, because the pink changes to a green. We then evolved the little flittle into a shiny Espathra, and wow, it's got crazy colors, but it looks really good. Since we were in the desert, it reminded me how much I wanted a shiny Orthworm, so I kept date changing until I found an outbreak, and managed to find the amazing blue worm only half an hour after the flittle. So many shinies, and only just shy of five hours in. I then decided to hunt for a Sinistee, but like what happened when I was hunting for a Glimmit, we found ourselves something else. I was actually super happy about this one, because I was planning to hunt him sometime during this challenge anyway. So we got the bread dog and the pink teacup shortly followed only 10 minutes later. Things were just going too good. Nothing had really been an issue yet. That was until I decided to hunt the new little pink hammer baby, Tinker Tink. The Tinker Tink evolution line is one of my all-time favorites now, so I couldn't turn down the shiny. However, the outbreak was in such a terrible spot. No matter where I stood, where I set up a picnic, or how I entered the outbreak, I struggled to get any more than four to spawn at a time. It's one of those problems you don't understand how frustrating it is until you're the one hunting, but there was just no consistent way to get a bunch to spawn. After half an hour of this painful hunt, I ended up running into a shiny that I've got way too many of in Legends Arceus and Pokemon Go. Oh, all right. I don't have it in this game yet, and it's a really good shiny, so I guess I can't complain. Another hour went by. Nothing. Surely I'd get something soon. Oh. <laughs> Another Shinx. No, I want the little Tinker Tink. Really? Again? I shouldn't complain about a shiny, but I just wanted this stupid hunt to be over. It ended up taking another whole hour before I finally witnessed the brown clubbed monster. I was so happy to finally find this and decided to evolve it instantly into Tinker Tough and then into Tinker Tun. Yeah, it was worth the pain. I love this thing. One of my new favorite Pokemon. My next hunt was pretty ambitious, as it was going to be my very first hunt for a shiny Paradox Pokemon. I invalidated to be specific. One of my new favorite Pokemon of all time. I actually like the original better than the shiny, but the shiny is still amazing. I've never hunted for Paradox Pokemon before, but since they can't be in Outbreaks, I heard the best possible way to hunt them is to make a specific sandwich that boosts both the shiny rates and the spawn rates of whatever the type the Pokemon is you're hunting. So I made one catered to fighting types, and this cave was chock full of Iron Valiants. Perfect. We had begun the isolation hunting method, essentially meaning we've isolated most of the spawns to what we were hunting. Yet somehow I managed to find a shiny poor me. I've already got him, but I'll 100% take another one because I love his whole evolution line both regularly and shiny. And damn, I thought this hunt would take at least two hours, but nope. Literally four minutes after the poor me, I got the silver iron valiant. Just look at this thing. What a sight to behold. That meant this hunt only took around 20 minutes. So I still had 10 minutes left on my sandwich boost. So I went out of the cave and tried to look for a shiny iron hands. We weren't able to find it, but we did however get a shiny metatite. Yeah, Shiny sandwich boosts are literally so broken. I haven't really been using them because shinies are already easy. But maybe if this video gets enough love, I'll do this challenge again, but with sandwich boosts on the whole time. Here's a quick little update on our stats. Things are going pretty nicely. And I reckon it's time to rapid fire a couple of things because we've got a long way to go. Our next hunt was for the first ever dolphin Pokemon, Finizen, who took around an hour to find because it's much harder to hunt in water. I then got a friend to join my world so I could evolve him into Palafin and to see his new zero to hero form. I then went back to area zero and decided to isolate hunt for the iron hands that we couldn't get earlier and found him after 40 minutes. Very happy to add him to my collection because it's a paradox Pokemon and he's very good for doing six star raids. Then I hunted for one of the weirdest new Pokemon in this generation, Toad School, who was actually very easy to identify as he goes from a brownie color to pure white. We managed to catch him then evolve him into Toad's Cruel, who has one of the craziest looking shinies, but it's actually pretty cool. I also randomly came across a shiny Mastiff whilst running around. I really don't don't like this Pokemon because just look at its face. Ugh. But at least the shiny's actually pretty nice. We had now crossed the halfway mark for this challenge and we're sitting at 21 shinies. And that's without even using sandwich boosts for most of the time, which is just absurd, but I love it. What's funny about my next hunt for shiny Florges is that for some reason they decide to spawn inside of each other and create these like crazy amalgamations of themselves, which just looks super funny. Is this what Mega Florges would look like? We then had another incident of finding a shiny I wasn't actively hunting for, that being a shiny Hopip. However, this did not conclude with a happy ending. Literally the one time I forgot to save before encountering it, I got him down to one HP with false swipe and it ended up killing itself with recoil after using memento. We had failed our first shiny and it was completely my fault for not saving. I'm so sorry little one. May this little green flying baby rest in peace. You'll never be forgotten and will live on in the memories of everyone watching this video. One subscribe equals one prayer. Ah, you know what? Who cares? Shiny's in the 
this game are easy. We then got the beautiful shiny floor just only six minutes after Hophip's death. Not only that, but then we found a shiny Knackly after another six minutes, and I've been dying to get him. We then turned him from Mario Rock Mushroom into a mini Minecraft building and then into a Minecraft Desert Temple. And then, only 20 minutes later, we found a shiny Binette whilst looking for a Klefki. Yeah, I think I'm over the Hophip already. However, I'm not over how much shiny Klefki hates me. Two hours went by with nothing. And because of how small Klefki was and how I needed full attention at the game at all times so I didn't miss it, this is the first time I gave up a hunt. I didn't really want it that bad, it was annoying to hunt, and there are so many other things I could hunt instead. Unfortunately though, the next hunt was just like Klefki, where it just didn't want me to find it shiny, which was super annoying because it was one I actually really wanted, that being Dondozo. Oh Dondozo. This hunt has given me a love-hate relationship with you, although it's not entirely his fault. Okay, annoyance one. We all know the performance of this game is pretty horrible at times, right? Well, for some reason, that's especially true in water. At times, I could cap it like 10 to 15 frames per second, which is basically playing the game at half speed. Annoyance 2, Veluza. As much as I love this new Pokemon, I hate him in the wild. The second he spots you, he'll dart at you faster than the speed of light and engage in battle, which is just such a time killer. This would happen non-stop because there were always like three Veluza surrounding the Dondozo outbreak. And three, whilst technically this isn't a bad thing, it was still an annoyance. And that was being teased with two other shinies I wasn't looking for instead of getting what I actually was hunting. The first one was a shiny Slowpoke, which I was very close to missing. It was just annoying seeing as it was my first shiny after Binette, which was three hours ago at this point, and just wasn't what I wanted at the time. Fast forward another whole hour of this evil hunt, and I'm greeted with a golden Azumarill. Definitely a great shiny, definitely one I love, but I just wanted this stupid catfish to shine so I could leave this area. It was like 1am at this point, I was super tired from hunting all day, but I told myself I wouldn't go to bed until I found him. Oh yeah, I haven't mentioned this yet, but this wasn't done in one sitting. This was over the course of three days that just totaled 24 hours worth of hunting, just to clarify. But I finally managed to find this giant dumb fish after another hour later, and I just couldn't be more relieved the hunt was over. Five more hours remained. Here's our last look at the stats before the challenge ends, and we're actually super close to finishing. Not many more things to tick off. It had now gotten to the point where I was getting the same outbreaks over and over, so I was occasionally spending 20 to 30 minutes just date resetting for something I really wanted. But eventually, I found a Spidops outbreak, and I was definitely down to hunt that, because it was super easy to notice, is a cool Pokemon, and the shiny is really nice. Epic. I then finally found an outbreak I was looking for this entire challenge, and that would be a Satoddle outbreak. Now, Satoddle's shiny is pretty cool on its own. However, Satitan's shiny is literally perfect. If you haven't seen it yet, you're in for a treat. The shiny finally appeared after around an hour after the spit ops, and I actually almost missed it, mistaking it for weird lighting. But now that we had gotten the shiny baby whale, it was time to evolve them into one of the coolest looking shinies of all time. Shiny Satitan. Just look at this absolute unit of a monster. I am actually so happy I have this now, and have wanted it ever since I first saw it shiny. I then tackled a bag on Outbreak, seeing as it's a baby pseudo legendary, and his shiny is one that most people love. We managed to find him, and we only had a little over an hour and a half remaining. Almost there. Next, I headed to a Lechonk Outbreak, because, I mean, it's Lechonk. And well, I actually ended up bumping into a shiny Pormo, which I'll definitely take. And then, with 55 minutes remaining, we ran into the pink shiny pig himself and didn't have much time to go. I had one more shiny I was dying to get this hunt, and that was Belly Bolt. But unfortunately, no matter how many times I date skipped, I just couldn't find an outbreak this entire time. And the reason I hadn't just done a Tad Bulb outbreak is because its shiny barely changes. And well, a tiny Pokemon plus a very small change in its shiny equals an annoying hunt. But I had no choice. We were too low on time, and there was no way I was going to end this video without the perfection shiny Belly Bolt is. Oh, hello, Blue Psyduck. I guess you can join the collection too if you want. 40 minutes remained. The outbreak didn't really have a good spot to picnic, and I couldn't find the sweet spot to optimize spawns, but I just winged it. As the timer was nearing the end, all I could do was pray that, one, I could actually get lucky enough to find the shiny, and two, that I'd actually be able to spot it. And thankfully, due to some sheer luck, I managed to spot the final shiny for this challenge with only seven minutes remaining, and we used a thunderstone on him instantly. Look at this thing. He is actually so perfect. So there we have it. 24 hours of shiny hunting complete. Let's see how I went with the challenges. Oh damn. All I was missing was a Pokemon from Gen 5 and Gen 7. Well, because we failed two challenges, we're going to be surprise trading away two of the shinies I got today. I decided to get rid of one of my duplicate shiny Shinx, as well as Mass Shift because I simply just don't like this Pokemon. In return, I got a whopping Swordbuck and a Sprigatito. Not the worst, I guess. So if you somehow, by any chance, got one of these 
shinies through surprise trade and their name is 24 hours, just know this isn't a threat of how long you have to live. Or is it? And that you have something very, very valuable in your collection now. Treasure it forever. So in just 24 hours, we scored ourselves a total of 34 shinies, a dead shiny hop-hip, and we were barely ever at full odds because of how little sandwiches I made. Absolutely insane. If you enjoyed this video, please subscribe because I've got tons of other amazing Scarlet and Violet videos planned. But before then, why not check out my video trying to beat the entirety of Pokemon Scarlet only using Sprigatito. I hope you all enjoyed and thank you so much for watching.